Hi, I'm Lee Forcella Burton. I'm the Director of Post 16 at the Lee Academy. This is the third video in a series of five about your options uh, at uh, the end of year 13. And this video is all about university. Uh, different types of university, how you apply, how offers are made. Hopefully it will make clear to you uh, the entire process. So, if you know that you want to carry on studying uh, and get a degree at university and you want the experience of going to university, um, there are a series of questions that you need to ask yourself to be able to make your choice of where to go and what to study. The first question is to ask yourself, what would you like to study? Now that's a really important question to ask yourself because in the UK, there are more than 400 degree providers and between them, they offer more than 50,000 different courses. So the choice is absolutely enormous. So it's really important that you actually work out what it is that you want to study uh, at university. Now, some courses at university are very specifically designed to prepare you for very specific careers. So if you want to be a civil engineer, for example, building bridges, tunnels, motorways, airports, uh, then you need to study civil engineering at university. Um, however, other degrees are what are called gateway degrees and they are much less career specific and they uh, will equip you to do a bigger variety of careers at the end of it. So if you already know what career you want to do, it's a really good idea to do a career specific degree. If you are not sure what career you want uh, when you finish your degree, then it's a really good idea to do a gateway degree course to leave your options open at the end of uh, that three years of study. So I studied English at university. That is considered to be a gateway degree because I could have gone off and done almost anything I wanted to at the end of an English degree. Um, uh, I chose to become a teacher, uh, but I could have chosen to become a journalist. I could have chosen to go into the world of business. Um, I could have done all kinds of different things with an English degree. Um, so if you're not sure what you want to do career-wise, maybe consider doing a gateway degree. Um, the other thing to consider is that not all degrees are going to lead to a financially rewarding uh, career. And if you do uh, a search online uh, to look up which degrees uh, earn you the most money uh, when you start work, you will see that there are league tables published every year of which degrees actually will end up earning you the most money and which degrees end up earning you the least money. And there are certain degrees that no matter how interested you might be in them, you, they aren't necessarily going to lead to a particularly financially rewarding career at the end of them. And that might be part of the consideration that you have when you are choosing which degree to study. It's really helpful for you personally if you do know what career you want your starting career to be because that might make it very much easier to choose a career specific degree to do at university. The next question for you to ask yourself is how do you prefer to study? Um, some degrees are taught so that they are 100% coursework. So if you are a person that doesn't cope very well with exams or doesn't perform as well in exams as you do in coursework, um, then 100% coursework degrees are perfect for you. However, some degrees are 100% exam based. The, the work you do during the course of the year doesn't contribute to your degree result at all. It is all down to the exams that you take in each year of your degree. If you are an exam uh, person, you need to be avoiding the coursework based degree programs and choosing exam based degree programs and in the course description that the university provides for each course it offers it will tell you how that course is assessed so that you know whether it's going to have a lot of coursework or a lot of exams or a balance between the two. Most degrees combine 
the two. They have some coursework and some exams. It's just that you'll need to look very carefully at each course at each university to see what proportion is exam and what proportion is coursework. So make sure that you are thinking about how you prefer to study when you are looking at courses at universities. There's no point choosing to do uh, uh, a degree program that is assessed in a way that you know you don't necessarily do very well with. The next question to really think about carefully is where do you want to study? Now for lots of people, for all kinds of reasons, it might be family commitments, it might be part-time employment commitments, there might be social or financial uh, reasons for it, they choose <coughs> to stay living at home when they're at university. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. You'll still get your degree. Uh, it will still take you the same amount of time as it takes anybody else. Your fees will be lower. So it's cheaper if you live at home when you go to university. You do have to rely, obviously, on your parents being willing to carry on subsidising you financially for the next three years and have you living at home with them. It may surprise you to know that there are lots of parents who can't wait for their children to go to university because it's the next uh, step in your parents' lives in seeing you fly the nest at that point. Um, uh, don't take it personally if they decide that they think that you should go away for university, but there are going to be some parents that do want their children to go. Um, uh, however, the majority of students do choose to go away from home for university. So that way you get the experience of living independently from your parents. Uh, you usually end up having to learn to cook for yourself, do your own laundry, uh, be responsible for your own finances, um, be responsible for your time and how you spend your time with no one standing over you uh, telling you what to do and when to do it. Uh, it is the best growing up experience uh, to go away from home uh, to university because you have to become responsible for all those things straight away. University terms only last 10 weeks and then you're back home uh, for a month uh, for your holidays in between terms and there are three 10 week terms over the course of the year. So even if you go away from home, uh, you'll be away from home for 30 weeks of the year, uh, that still means that you're going to be at home uh, for 22 weeks of the year. So um, even going away from home to university, you're still going to be at home uh, a lot. Um, so just to remember that going away from home to university doesn't mean going to the other end of the country. It might be that you decide that instead of going to Greenwich, which would be very easily to commutable uh, from here in Dartford, it might be that you decide you're going to go to Brighton or you're going to go to Essex. Um, for university, they're both less than an hour's drive from Dartford, uh, so very accessible for you to get back home again, um, but uh, far enough away that they're probably not commutable on a daily basis and therefore um, uh, you'll get the chance to live away from home. So going away and getting independence doesn't have to mean going the other end of the country. You might decide you want to. When I applied for university, I drew a 200 mile radius around Dartford and said I'm not applying within that radius. And so I ended up going to Hull University, which is 220 miles away from Dartford, because I was determined that I wanted to go away uh, and get away from Dartford and have a complete change of scene. Uh, but you don't have to go that far to still have the experience of uh, independence. Now the next really important question for you to ask when choosing a university is, uh, what kind of university do you want to go to? There are two main differentiations between different kinds of university. There are some universities that are city centre universities. So they have buildings dotted around a city centre, not connected to one another. When you come out of the building where you've just had a lecture, for example, you're coming back out to the that everybody else that lives and works in that city getting on with their day-to-day -day life. If you go to university in London, that's what the universities are like. Uh, lots of big universities in cities 
uh, are based in city centres. They, um, however, the other kind of university that you might decide you want to go to um, is a campus university. This is they are usually built outside of uh, towns and cities, on one site. So everything is on that one site. All the buildings where the teaching happens, all the accommodation. Uh, the students' union, which is like the bar facilities, uh, the laundrette, whatever it else it is that they, you need to survive, a little shop, uh, it will all be built on this one campus. Uh, if you've grown up watching American movies about people going to university, they're always built on campuses in uh, America. Um, and if that's the kind of university experience that you want, then it's a campus university that you should be applying for. And it can actually halve your choices straight away. So one really, really quick way to cut down the choice between all those 400 different uh, degree providers in the UK is to just filter out uh, the ones that are city centre universities or the ones that are campus universities, depending on which it is that you want. Um, and that can instantly get rid of half of your options for you and make it a little bit easier to start focusing in on particular universities. <clears throat> the most important thing that you need to think about when you're choosing a university is what grades that you are on track to get. Um, it is absolutely the most important thing to consider because when you apply for university, they will come back to you and they will either reject your application, say, sorry, we're not interested in offering you a place, or they'll make an offer to you that is based on what grades uh, they want you to get at the end of year 13. And they will always tell you what their typical entry requirements are in the course description uh, on their website. Um, there is absolutely no point in applying for a course, no matter how interesting you think it sounds, if they tell you in the entry requirements that you uh, that you need grades that you know your teachers are saying you are not going to get. You've got to be realistic with yourself. And I have to make it really clear to you now that when we put your school reference in to university, we will not over predict just to match a particular university's uh, entry requirements. Because all we're doing if we do that is setting you up for disappointment in the summer of year 13 when you get your results. We would rather that you were realistic about your options now and apply to universities that you know you've got a fair chance of being able to get the grades that they're looking for. When universities make an offer to you, there are a number of different ways that that offer might appear. So some universities will come back to you and say, yes, we'd like to offer you a place, but you have to get particular grades in the particular courses that you are studying. Say you're studying English, history and global politics, uh, they might come back to you and say you have to get an A for history, uh, a B for English and a 6 for global politics. Uh, some universities for some courses will specify in their offer that you have to get a certain grade in one particular subject and it's usually the subject that is most closely related to the course that you are applying for. Uh, so if uh, you were applying to do sociology, for example, at university, they might specify that they want you to get a particular grade in social and cultural anthropology, uh, for example. Increasingly, and now it's the majority of universities, when they make their offers to students, they will make their offer not in terms of the grades that they want you to get for, for particular course, subjects you're taking, they will make you an offer on something called UCAS points. Now, UCAS points are where you turn the grade that you can get for a in different kinds of subjects into a number of points. Uh, and so instead of saying they want you to get an A, a B and a 6, they might say to you they want you to get 120 UCAS points. Um, and they don't mind how you get those 120 UCAS points, so long as your points all add up to 120 uh, at the end of it. Uh, and in fact, the slide that follows this here shows you how they convert grades to uh, points. So for example, 
if you get the top grade for an IB diploma, grade seven, that gets you 56 UCAS points. Similarly, if you get the top grade that you can get for an A level, which is an A star, that will also get you 56 UCAS points. And if you get the top grade you can get for a BTEC, which is distinction star, that will also get you 56 UCAS points. Since September 2016, when the government did their last big review of post-16 qualifications, they have made it so that all those different course types are equivalent when it comes to the number of UCAS points that they generate, because they don't want students to be limited on where they can go to university based on the type of qualifications that are available to them in the school where they take their post-16 qualifications. We're fortunate in our school that we offer all three kinds of qualification, and so it should make it a little bit easier for you to work out um, exactly how many points you're going to get. Uh, on the UCAS website, there is a UCAS uh, tariff calculator where every time you get a set of predicted grades from your teachers, you can put those into the tariff calculator and it will tell you how many UCAS points that, that turns into. Uh, if you get if you've decided that your first choice university needs you to get 120 and your uh, predicted grades, say at Christmas of year 13, add up to uh, 112 UCAS points, you know you've got to find another eight UCAS points somewhere in there. And then you can look at your subjects and think, well, if I'm short of eight UCAS points, that might mean that I've got to go from a, a B in the A-level I'm studying, that I've got to get that up to an A to get those extra eight UCAS points. Or it might be uh, that you decide, uh, actually, um, I need to do it by going from a grade four to a grade five for the IB subject that I'm studying. You need to be really proactive in turning your predicted grades every time you get a, a report um, into UCAS points so you can see whether you're on track for getting the, the points offer uh, from the university you've applied to and then making a decision which subject do I need to actually increase my grade in. And you can be quite strategic that way in focusing on improving one subject while maintaining what you're doing in the others. The other thing to point out about particular entry requirements and how the offer will get made to you is that if you are applying for a creative course, creative courses uh, like art-based subjects or architecture, for example, um, they will always ask you to put a portfolio together to, sh to demonstrate your creative work. Uh, and we have staff in school that will help you to put your portfolio together so that you're ready for when you go for an interview at the university, you can take your portfolio with you and talk about the work that's in there um, uh, and what it shows them uh, about your skill level. So um, once you've uh, seen what kind of offer you're likely to get from a university, that is quite often straight away dictates whether or not you can keep that course in that university uh, on your option list of uh, universities you're looking at because uh, quite often people find out that they can't get the grades that, uh, that they know that university will typically want. Now, something else around uh, offers and how they're made by universities uh, is that most universities will make offers that are called conditional offers. You can come to us if you get a certain number of UCAS points or particular grades in particular subjects. That's called a conditional offer. Increasingly, uh, a few years ago, universities started making unconditional offers where they said, you can come and join us no matter what grades you get. And there was a flurry of uh, universities that got um, some quite negative press because they were trying to get students to come to them saying it doesn't matter what grades you get. Um, there is some interesting data from UCAS that says that typically if a student is going to university uh, on an unconditional offer, they'll end up getting two grades lower in their uh, exams in year 13 than they might have done if they were working for a conditional offer. So you've got to be really careful not to take your foot off the gas if you do get an unconditional offer from a university. There's been a legal action going through uh, which has suddenly made it a lot less likely that you're going to get unconditional offers from the university. Um, so they are probably going to become uh, uh, somewhat of a memory going forward. You're most likely to get an offer that is conditional 
on you getting uh, certain uh, grades. Some universities are compromising between the two and they're making what are called conditional, unconditional uh, offers, which means they'll make a conditional offer to you. You need to get a certain number of UCAS points. But they say, but if you make us your first choice university, then we'll make your offer unconditional. And that's how some universities are choosing to get around the legal challenge that's going against unconditional offers. Be wary. Don't feel pressured into accepting a place because they're saying it will become an unconditional offer. Uh, you've got to choose the university that is the right one for you, not the one that you think is going to be easiest to get into. So, as well as thinking about whether universities are campus or city-based universities, you can also think about how old the university is and therefore the physical differences between them and the types of course that they offer. So in the UK, we have ancient universities, which are the very oldest ones, the ones that have been around for eight, nine hundred years, like Oxford and Cambridge and some universities in Scotland. There are red brick universities, which are the, the 19 next oldest universities in the UK. Uh, and they were all universities that were given their charter, their permission to be a university before 1963. So universities like Hull, where I went, for example, or Reading or Bristol. Uh, and then there are a whole bunch of universities that were built from 1963 until 1992 that are called plate glass universities and that reflects the type of architecture that you see there because of when they were built in the 60s and 70s. Um, universities like the University of Kent who we work with really closely, University of Sussex, Warwick and York which are both Russell Group universities so the elite of UK universities. They're all plate glass universities. They've become universities within the last 50 years. And then there are another group of universities called new universities, who are universities that have come into existence since 1992. And they're quite often polytechnics that converted and became universities or colleges that became universities, or they are brand new institution, industry-led universities uh, that have been set up. Uh, to meet a particular employment uh, need. Uh, the Russell Group universities are the top 24 universities in the country. They are an elite group. They are the universities who have the highest entry requirements and where there is a certain prestige attached to going there and getting a degree from them. I would like to point out, however, that they are self-appointed. They decided that they were going to be the elite. They uh, made themselves uh, selective in that way. Um, it's a bit like going to the university equivalent of a grammar school. You have to get higher entry requirements to get in there uh, and they expect more of you once you get there. Um, there although there is certain uh, prestige to go into one of those Russell Group universities, you've really got to ask yourself, are they good at the kind of courses that I want to study? Because the general rule of thumb is the newer the, the university, the more likely they are to offer newer and funkier courses. So if media is your thing, there is no point looking in an ancient or a red brick university because they are not set up to teach those courses. You need to be applying to a plate glass or a new university that has been in existence when those new media technologies have come into existence as well. So for example, Bournemouth University, which is a, a plate glass university, um, uh, is the number one university in the UK for media-based courses. Um, so you need to be choosing universities that are particularly good at the course you want to do, not just whether you think they are uh, older and therefore more established and uh, will have more prestige. Uh, I talked in a previous video about widening, the widening participation uh, agenda that universities have. Um, uh, if you fall into a wider participa participation agenda category, you must make sure you state it on your um, uh, personal statement because the university is much more likely to make you an offer if they're weighing you up uh, between someone else, you and someone else with similar qualifications as you. Um, so... Next step for you if you're thinking of going to university is work out what subject you want to study, decide which assessment method is your preference, decide what location you would prefer for university, 
decide on the type of university that you want to go to and look up what the entry requirements are for the courses at those universities. If you can keep focused on those five things, it should mean you can whittle those 400 university providers down to a manageable number uh, so that you can start thinking about finding out more about them. And that might revolve around going to open days, uh, either virtual open days where they'll show you around the university online or physically go into the open day putting an application in and then going to an applicant day down the line where once they've made an offer to you, you uh, go to visit them to see what they're like um, or beginning an email communication with them or communication through social media to find out if they are the university option for you. So uh, if you're planning on going to university, use the page on the website that is all about university, including uh, following the link to set up your own UCAS hub. So all the research you do around university, start gathering it together in your little personal hub on UCAS. I'll see you in the next video.